Science Beetle. Hello students, what I want to do in this lesson is continue on from the previous one where we calculated neutrons, electrons from various elements and kind of continue that practice so that you can continue to do more problems and uh, get more experience in solving these types of problems. And so I'm going to go ahead and do seven examples for you, three from the metal group, three from the non-metal group, and one from the metalloid group. All right, so before we begin, I want to go ahead and just remind us of the equations at the very top. Uh, so let me write them and then we'll get started. So those example, uh, those uh, equations are, if you take the mass number, subtract the atomic number from that, you're going to get the number of neutrons. Then if you've got the mass number, you subtract the number of neutrons, you're going to be able to calculate the number of electrons. And why are we able to do this? Because the mass number is going to be the total amount. It's going to be the mass of the protons, mass of the neutrons, and mass of the electrons. And so let me kind of just so we can be all together on this, let me show you mathematically what all of this is. So if you take the mass number, okay, this is going to be the same thing as the number of protons plus the number of neutrons plus the number of electrons. And the thing we're talking about when we say the number, we're also ta we're talking about the mass. Okay, the mass of the protons, the mass of the neutrons, and the mass of the new electrons, all of these three together are going to equal the mass number. Okay, so if you take the mass number and you subtract the number of protons, then obviously you're going to be left with the number of neutrons, and if you subtract the number of neutrons from that, you're going to be left with the number of electrons. Okay, so now that we've got that out of the way, let's go ahead and do a couple of these examples. So we've got this example here. We've got an element with the symbol Li. Right? And so we know that this is going to be lithium. And we've got an atomic number of 3, which is the number of protons. And we've got a mass number of 6.941. Okay? And so let me go ahead and get this problem underway. And so if we've got this problem here, we first want to use the very first equation. We take the mass number which is 6.941, and then to that, we're going to subtract the number of protons. In this case, it's 3. And if we do that, we get a number of 3.941. When we round this number up, because it's a 9 here, we get 4. So this number here is equal to the number of neutrons. Now, we come back and we take this 6.94 again, the mass number, 6.941, and we subtract the 4 from it that we just calculated. So essentially, I'm taking it here and putting it there. And when I do that, the number that I come out with is the following. I'm going to get 2.941. Now, I want to pause here and kind of show you something. When we did the calculation over here for the number of neutrons, we actually ended up with 3.941, and then we rounded up. So if we would have taken this number here and subtracted it from the 6.94, so in other words, if I would have done 6.941 minus 3.941, this would have clearly shown that we would have come up with essentially 3. And there, I prefer this method here as opposed to using the number from the number of neutrons, largely because here you have to remember to round up. But if you had used the original number, we would have gotten a solid whole number here. Okay? So if we do this math, we know that our number of neutrons is 4, and we know that the number of electrons is 3. Okay? And so that's a very good one there. Now, the next step would have been if we want to go ahead and graph this, or uh, draw a the structure, the Bohr structure for this particular element. And I think it's worth doing, so let's go ahead and do that now. So I just moved the information over here to the right, so I make some space for me. And essentially what we've got is that we've got three protons. Now we have to use all of the information. So if I go back and I'm consistent with the coloring scheme that I used before, I'm going to go ahead and use the red for my protons. All right, and so I've got one, two, three protons, and then I calculated four neutrons, so there's one, two, three, four neutrons, 
and I also calculated three electrons. And we know that we've got the first orbital, and they want to be as further apart as possible. There's one electron, there's two electrons, and then now I go into the second orbital, and then three. So this would be the structure for lithium. Let's go ahead and do another one. So the, here's this one here. This symbol here represents sodium. Okay, so let's quickly do the math for this. So we take the mass number, 22.9897, and we subtract from that 11. And the result here is 11.9897. Now keep in mind that what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and round this up. So let me write this over here in parentheses. We're going to write 12 because now that becomes our number of neutrons. Right? And so the next calculation is to calculate the electrons. So I go 22.9897, and I subtract from it 11.9897. Again, using the preferred so I can use the actual number. This cancels out, and what I'm left with here is 11. So I'm going to have 11 electrons in this particular structure. So now I've got the three pieces of information. I've got my protons, I've got my neutrons, and now I've got my electrons, so now I'm ready to draw my structure. So since I have 11 protons, I'm going to go ahead and draw those. So I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. I've got 12 protons, and let me draw those. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. And now I've got 11 electrons, so I'm going to do the first orbital. I've got one, two, second orbital. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And now I've got another orbital. And so, so up to now I've got a total of 10 electrons, and then I would just put the one here. And so that would be the structure for sodium. All right, let's go ahead and do another one. And this time we're going to do uh, an element with the symbol K. So if you want to go ahead and pause and see what you can come up with, and then I'll work it out for you, that, that would probably be a very good idea. Okay, so this particular one, the symbol is going to be the symbol for potassium. And if we follow the math here, 39.0983. Three is the mass number, and I, from that I'm going to subtract the number of protons uh, or the atomic uh, number, which is 19. If I do that, I'm going to get 20.0983, and rounding this up, I'm going to have 20. That's my number of neutrons. I'm just going to represent that as an N. And so the next step that I want to do is find my electrons, 39.0983. I'm going to subtract from it 20.0983. These cancel, and I'm left with 9 and a 1. So the, here I've got 19 electrons. And I think from now on, the symbol for the electron, I'm going to start using it as an E with a minus sign on it. Okay? And so if I want to go ahead and draw this structure, I have 19 protons, so let me go ahead and just draw the structure for you and compare it to what you drew already, and hopefully you'll get the right thing. And so as you can see, here's the structure. It didn't all quite fit at the bottom, but if you notice, you've got two electrons in the center, followed by eight electrons in the, next, in the second orbital, followed by eight electrons in the third orbital, and then you've got the lone electron here at the very end. Okay? And so let's go ahead and now... What you've noticed, if, if you paid attention to where these elements are on the periodic table, lithium, sodium, and potassium are over here on group one on the left-hand side. And notice that they all had lone uh, electrons on the, on the uh, outer shell or the outermost electron orbital. What I'm going to do now is shift to the other side on the right side, and we're going to have uh, three examples of nonmetals. And so let me show those to you. And so here we've got... Um, Ne, it's not potassium, but rather Ne is, Ne is actually the symbol for neon. Okay, and so let's go ahead and run through the equations here to solve the number of neutrons and the number of electrons. Okay, if you want to go ahead and pause here and see if you can come up with the right answer, that would be a good step. Otherwise, follow along. 
And so we want to go ahead and take the mass number, which is 20.1797, and we're going to subtract from that the atomic number, which is 10. If we do that, the number that we come up with is 10.1797. This number here, we're going to round it up, and this is going to be 10, and that's our number of neutrons. And we, if we continue with the equation here, with the second equation, we take 20.1797, which is the mass number, subtract from it the number of neutrons that we just calculated, 10.1797. These cancel out, and we're left with 10. And these are going to be the number of electrons. And let me just use a symbol there. Okay? And so if I do that, let me go ahead and do the um, structure for this particular um, element. And so here you've got the structure for neon. Notice that there are eight electrons in the outermost uh, orbital. And so there are no empty spaces, no uh, need for uh, any gaps to be filled. All right, so let's move on and let's try argon, which is going to be in period three right below neon on the, on the table. I'm going to go ahead and do the calculations down here on the bottom left so that we can have the main screen for this actual structure because it's going to be a little bit bigger. So if we take 39.948 is the mass number, subtract from it 18. The number that we get here is going to be uh, 121.948. We round this up, this is going to be 22, and this is going to be the actual number of neutrons. And then the other item is if we take 39.948 and subtract 21.948. Four eights cancel, this is a 9, so essentially the number that I get here is going to be 18 for the number of electrons. So now I'm going to go ahead and draw the structure, again, uh, for... Go ahead and stop if you want to. Go ahead and pause. I'll draw the structure and then compare it to what you've got. Otherwise, just follow along. So I know that the uh, proton count is going to be 18, so I have to draw 18 protons. There's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, oh, 18, uh, not 19, but 18, so let me erase one. Okay, and then we're going to go ahead and put the neutrons on. And we have 22 neutrons, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, and 22. And keep in mind that I'm just drawing them in here. They're going to be arranged in a slightly different way, but just for graphical purposes, I'm putting them there like that. And then I go to the electrons, and I have 18. So I begin with the first orbital. I got one, two. In fact, let me just go ahead and draw a orbital on the inside, just for space sake. So there's one, two. We move to the second one. There's three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, and 10. So now I've got two filled orbitals. Uh, so I've got 10. i got 8 more to go. So I go to the third orbital, and I put 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And if I count those, I've got 2 in the center, two in the, 8 in the second orbital. That's 10. 10 plus the 8 on the outer orbital. I have a total of 18 electrons. This would be the structure for argon. So here's another one. This element has a symbol of Cl, so this is going to be the element chlorine. And if I do the math here, I'm going to take 35.4527, and I'm going to subtract 17 from it, and that will give me my neutron count. That number is 18.4527, okay? And so this is my neutrons. And I'm going to go ahead and round that up just so you can see. Um, so not quite uh, the 0.5, so this is going to be 18 neutrons. And then if I do the same thing, the same calculation over here for my electron count, I'm going to take 35.4527 and subtract from it 18.4527. If I do that math, what I'm going to wind up getting is the following number. I'm going to get 17 electrons. 
And so now what I got to do is draw the structure. And I begin with my proton count. I have got 17, so let me draw 17 protons. Now I'm going to go ahead and draw my 18 neutrons. And now I follow it up with the 17 electrons. So I draw the first orbital. There's one electron, two electrons. Go to the second orbital. There's three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And so I have a total of 17. I've already put 10. I need seven more to go. So I fill up another orbital. I begin with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Notice that this one's missing one here. It's a minus. So if you go look at this on the table, you're going to find out that because it's a minus, the, the chlorine typically has a minus one charge. Just a little bit of FYI for you. Now that kind of finishes up the, the third example in the non-metals. Now the last example that I want to show you is going to be a metalloid. And the example that I've got here, I'll just tell you which one it is. It's, it's going to be number five, boron. And so let me draw the information up here, and then uh, I'll, we'll walk through uh, drawing the structure. Okay, so if we take the 10.811, that's the mass number, subtract from it 5, and the resulting uh, neutron count is, is 5.811, and so this here is my neutron count. If I round that up, this is going to go up to 6 neutrons, okay? And then if I do the 10.811, I'm going to just draw a line here, minus the 5.811, the result there is going to be 5 electrons. And so if I were to go ahead and draw those, I'm going to start with my proton count. I'm going to have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 protons. Now I'm going to do my bro uh, neutrons in blue. And I need a total of 6 neutrons. So it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 neutrons. Then my electrons, and I have a total of five electrons. So there's one electron, two electrons. Go to the second orbital. Three, four, five. And so that would be the structure for the uh, boron. All right, so if you want to go ahead and draw these structures side by side on your own, you'll essentially see that here on, on the boron, you're going to notice that it has three missing spots, one, two, three, and actually it's got uh, four spots here with two electrons that it's missing, right? And so when you look at this, it's something to consider for a future lesson when we get into it in terms of the oxidation states. But we'll save that discussion for a later time. For now, those are the examples. Hope you enjoyed it. Subscribe, and we'll see you next time.